getting there. It takes a while, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You want me to do it yeah. for a while? <laughs> I'm really thankful that you're doing that, just so you know. I think that's gonna clear. Okay, awesome. I got down ego to I think it's just good deal. If it's not, I can get it the rest of the way up. I appreciate it so much. I'll go ahead and sign it. Oh yeah. And I'll bring it back down to you. Yeah. Nice, nice guy. He raised up that trailer so I didn't have to do it. Anytime somebody does that, it's awesome. I'm gonna move this back here. undoing all the stuff that I did Okay, so now I gotta climb back up here and take this off the neck. I was really careful doing that because that's a good way to get hurt if you're not paying attention. 
So I'll strip all these off this side. You get to see the whole process this go around. Once I've got one side off, it makes this side easier to get. There's no tension against it on the other side of the trailer. Whichever first side, whichever the side of the trailer is, the first side is always the hardest one. You're talking to myself and there's people pulling in and leaving they probably think I'm a nut. Okay. Save that for some way.
Okay. So, let me get... re hooked up here. No, oh, actually, I need to do this. Okay, so this took a little longer than usual because I had 12 straps on instead of 10. Not a lot more. Change, nothing broken, no broken. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Dozen of them. Now we roll the straps. Job's not done until the straps are rolled up. It's like spaghetti, you just grab it in and go. He was really, really nice to come crank this thing up. He didn't even have to do that. It was my job. So it's like, I don't know, about 80 degrees out here, I think. It's muggy, just like what you would expect in Louisiana. Warm and humid. Sticky. Super sticky. like it's been a long day and I haven't really worked all that hard yet today. It's kind of out of steam. Probably because of the mugginess. Humidity. It's enough to make you feel tired, even if you're not totally tired. Pick 
repetitive stuff. I don't know how many straps I've wound up over the years. A few. One thing about having them cut this short, it's not doesn't take as long to wrap, wind them up as it does the long ones. One more positive to having short straps, relatively short. Those were gloves for this, the straps get so dirty. Delivery down at Seguin last week. You can see what kind of stuff gets on them. It ain't pretty. For those of you who missed that, you need to go back and look at it. The delivery at Seguin from Pennsylvania. Some guy passed me in a great big Dodge pickup, and there was a other carcass in the road right when he was going by my trailers. And he hit that crit critter carcass full on with all these wheels on the right side. And it just splashed all of those fancy aluminum trailers with blood and guts. And and some of that got on these straps. So I always, always wind straps with gloves on. That's just the stuff I know about that gets on them. Who knows what else is on them? Couldn't tell you. <sighs> 10 down, two to go. I always roll my straps unless I'm making an after hours delivery and they've got a gate to be locked and it's going to make them have to stay later if I stand there and them all up then I'll just throw them in and wind them later but I do that for their benefit not mine I'd rather have them rolled up when I put them away then I know I don't have to screw with it they'll be how I need them when I get to my next job Okay, I'm going to lock this. I'll show you what I'm locking here. This is my, one of my toolboxes. This is where I keep all my straps. Get my big fingers out of the way. There we go. It's my strap box. So when I'm done, I close it up and lock it every time. Even if I'm going 10 miles, I lock it every time. That way I get in the habit of it. Okay. Now, here's my stack that I just delivered. I'm gonna slide out from under that. I'm gonna walk around and check the other side real quick just to make sure I didn't leave anything sitting over there. I don't think I did. But it's better to be safe than sorry. So we'll go see. I'm trying to just see and see what I'm seeing. Okay, and no, I didn't leave anything laying. Everything looks good. No damage, no scratches, no nothing. Now I just got to slide out from under this. Everything's got to be done before I leave. I don't feel good about it. It's got to be done right. Alright, so that's that. Now I'm going to reset my fuel economy. i got eight and a half miles to the gallon coming up with this heavy ass load. And I hauled that aluminum one last week from Pennsylvania and 
did between seven and eight. So the 11 and one had a much higher, what do they call that, a, a wind drag coefficient or whatever. It was dragging a lot, <laughs> evidently, because it burned a lot more fuel than this did, and this one's heavier by 5,000 pounds. So that tells me that as far as this kind of stuff goes, your wind resistance is what eats up your mileage, not the weight. The weight will affect it, but not nearly as much as the wind situation. Okay, now I've checked and double checked. I closed everything that's supposed to be closed. I locked my toolbox. Got my paperwork done. One last thing before I head back to wherever I'm heading. I don't even know where I'm heading yet. You going to grab the other one while I wait for sundown or find something going east? Sounds good to me. Thank you. See, I can do this if I'm sitting still. Okay, he's still wanting me to go to Pennsylvania, but he's wanting a load going out that way to help defray some of the cost to get there, which makes sense. If it gets too late in the week, I'm going to get stuck out there for the weekend, and I really don't want that. So we'll see what happens. That was a juggling game. You got to juggle this, juggle that. I do want some coffee, which I made this morning at home. Like a smart girl for a change. So I guess my objective then is to get back as close as I can with what driving time I got left to Will's Point and get staged up for the other one. They open at 6 in the morning, so anytime after that I can get in there and grab those and come back over here and then he'll send me somewhere else. If he doesn't have anything going east, I'm not going to worry about this week. If he gets something going east, maybe we can arrange it for next Monday. And then I would have all week to get out to do that. So I'm going to turn this around. I can't help but say that because that was part of his critique on my videos. Oh, get my mic back on here too. Okay, so I am done with this job. It's done, done, done. But I'm still on the clock. And let me check something here. My available hours. Okay, good. That, that used up my whole break that I had to have. Um, my whole break, you have to have a half an hour break for every eight hours you drive. Well, your break doesn't have to be sitting around with your feet up, smoking a cigarette, or reading a book. You can have a working break as long as you're not driving that half hour. That still does count as a valid break because what they want you to do is take a break from driving. Okay, I got something in here making a lot of weird noise. It quit, so I guess it's done. Whatever it was, I guess it's done. So, two things I need to do. I need to fuel up. And I'm south of Alexandria right now. I go up this way. I came in from the south. He, he looped me around on a different route. Normally, I would come in from the north and then go down and, and turn around and come back up. But he looped me around through a different exit, which that's good. That's good to know there's an easier way to get in here. It doesn't have so much um, small roads with the load. Now that I don't have a load on, I don't care if it's small roads or not, because, you know, now I'm not having to watch everything behind me. Not having to worry about, you know, any of that business. That's what's falling over. Okay. I do want to plug that back in. Try and plug my cell phone in. I did have it out. This is gonna just be one of them days when I can't do anything one-handed here. I can usually manage to do that without having to 
mess around with it too much, but I just didn't want to plug in. Okay, now we've got another. An unread message. Okay. Okay, got that all done. All my communiques with the office are complete now. I don't know why they're answering me back this late. I mean, the broker guy, David, he kind of has to because he's directing the show. But the lady from Billings, she doesn't really have to. I don't expect her to answer me after hours, but she does. She's very nice. So, basically, back to Will's point, I guess. Recent Wells Point, Texas. So it's going to be nine or ten in the morning before I can even go pick that up if I go all the way back to Wells Point or whether I don't. So I might as well do that and then just plan on sleeping in because it's going to be probably eleven or midnight. Will be midnight before I get there. So it'll be 10 or 11 before I can pick it up, actually, because I have to sit for 10 hours once I've driven all my driving for the day. So it's not going to be an early day for me tomorrow. It'll be a middle-of-the-road day. <laughs> I probably won't be as late getting here as I was today, but I'm, I'm still going to be later probably than what they like, probably after hours. See, I think I got there at 1 today, 1.15. So if I get there at, let's see, noon, well, midnight to 10, I get, well, I can stay right down the road from it. So 10.15 is the earliest I can get over there, probably somewhere thereabouts. So 11.15 is as soon as I can get it ready, get out of there probably, 12, 1, 2, 3. So I, yeah, I can probably do it early, you know, well, not early tomorrow, but late tomorrow afternoon I can get back here with the second load. So anyway, that's the plan. That's what I'm going to do. But I do need to get fuel. I've got 105 miles of fuel on. Burned a lot of fuel on that load. So this is US-165 that runs out of Alexandra, Alexandria, Louisiana. And I'm basically heading northeast. It comes out, um, heading southwest out of Alexandria. So I'll go back in and, and meet back up with Interstate 49 up here in about, oh, I don't know, five or six miles. something I don't know like the speed limit yeah I'm going way too fast sometimes you got to check yourself <laughs> sometimes I got to check myself all these flowering trees down here I think those are crepe myrtles the ones on the right the ones on the left look like uh, maybe locust trees maybe maybe they're all I don't know they may all be locusts. 
Or they may all be crepe myrtles. They look more like crepe myrtles. Just not used to seeing them that big. The next town down the road from us, Duncan, um, likes to claim that they're the crepe myrtle capital. And they've got a lot of them there. But they're not as big as these. So these may not be crepe myrtles, but they're something akin to that. Something similar. So I thought fuel prices are higher here than they were in parts of Texas. It's here is about the same as um, back home, 507. That's their cash price. That Circle K does this and it pisses me off. Loves does it too. They give you a, a price and then they say, oh, that's our cash price. But the price at the pump is not the cash price. It's the higher price, the 517. That's what's actually on the pump. So I'm not sure how you get that cash price. I mean, if you're paying with a debit card, it's cash anyway. It's better than cash because it goes straight into their bank. Um, if you walk in there with a wad of cash, what do you do? I need $200 worth of diesel and I want it for <laughs> cash price. I don't know how they do that. Never actually tried because I don't carry that kind of cash with me. Um, so yeah, I don't know. A little odd, but it kind of pisses me off because they lure you in with one price. It's bait and switch basically is what it is. I'm not sure exactly how it is that they get rid of her, get away with it. Maybe because nobody complains, but it annoys me I'm when there are people who don't like it. Clearly they care deeply what I think too, right? My glasses are so filthy. Something I learned about living in the South when we first moved back to Oklahoma, I spent most of my adult life in other places that weren't humid <laughs> at all, like Colorado and uh, other places in that vicinity. And I never really got to the point in those places where when I was working I'd start sweating and it would get sweat all over my glasses but you do that here and it doesn't take much and then it just gunks them up so you have to really work to clean them kind of annoying oh this is a giant roundabout I remember this this thing's a pain in the butt as you get up here and you have to yield to the oncoming traffic well the first time I came up here, it was just non-stop traffic. You couldn't even get out into this thing, but it, that's exactly what it is. It's a giant roundabout, probably a quarter mile in circumference. Let's see, and I want that one, I guess. I think I want to go this way around it. I'd forgot about this. These things are so dumb. <laughs> I mean, this is better than a tiny one, though, because at least if you got a trailer on, you can get around through it and, and not get jammed up, but still. Not my favorite um, traffic control device. But as you can see, it's just a giant roundabout. Here we go. Now, these people over here have to yield, and all me and all these people behind me are going to just make them wait. Shreveport, that's where we're heading. So I get to do the same thing tomorrow that I did today. Which I'm not going to complain because they're well paying jobs. And they're easy jobs. Relatively. I mean, tying them together is kind of 
car. You know, it's actually kind of work. <laughs> I guess there's worse things I could spend my day doing than that. I honestly don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep this up, though. Um, I'm no spring chicken. I do better on the jobs that are just hook it up, inspect it, and go, rather than having to do all this tying down business. I don't have to climb around on them too much, but I do have to climb up onto the neck to get the necks tied down and then get my straps off there. That's the part I worry about more than any of it. You can, I mean, following that part, you can die if you hit something on the way down in the wrong spot. So I try to be real careful about that, real um, aware of what I'm doing. I don't just go jumping up there without thinking about it. <laughs> That would be a bad way to go. Okay, I'm not in any real danger of running out of fuel anytime real soon, so I'm going to be a little picky about what I pay. I'd like to pay under five. If I can do it at all. Is that a four? It looks like a four there. That can't be right. 429? I don't think so, but I'm going to go look and see what it actually is. Oh, that's their credit price for... Well, they got no diesel here. There's their diesel. Let's we'll see how much it is. It's probably five. It's probably way above five. Since they're not showing the price on the sign. 539. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Don't think so. Ain't paying extra. That's for damn sure. So they're... 20 cents higher than Circle K that's across the street. So these people are as bad as loves in Marlowe. They're 20, 30 cents higher than everybody else. All right, just keep going. The sun's in just the right place to where it makes it hard to see. I mean, it is 7.30 at night, so I guess I should be expecting it. 5.29, I'm just not going to buy fuel here. I'll go on up the road. Somebody's got to have a better deal somewhere. And this may be a while. Okay. We're all going to turn and not use signals. That's awesome. Swamp Daddies. That must be a bar, and it must be a popular bar <laughs> because it's packed. <laughs> if I had to guess, that would be my guess. Some of these places don't even have their signs turned on, showing prices, so. I know there's a couple places between here and Shreveport I can probably do at least as well, maybe better. I can't remember what I saw coming down through there. I was more worried about the load than diesel price for the most part.
Okay, mile and three tenths to the interstate. I guess he's looking for somebody to preach to, maybe he's holding up a book. I just didn't want him to hop out in front of me and make me hit him. People do weird stuff like that, you know. It's better not to make it easy for them. <laughs> it's my, my whole theory on the topic. Don't make it easy for people to do crazy, stupid things. So glad not to have a trailer back there. I always feel like I've just been let out of jail or something. I'm free. Free, free. So, evidently, replacing my ratchet handles and using my better technique um, attaching them attaching the straps paid off because I didn't have to stop and adjust any straps they all stayed relatively tight till like the last four miles and one was bobbling around a little bit but nothing to worry about so that was awesome So I still stopped and checked them um, once for the logbook. You need to check them every three hours, basically. I mean, I could see in the mirror that they were good, but just to stay legal, I'd stop and got out and walked around and felt them all to make sure, and they were good. One of those things that, you know, it's, it's a safety issue. It's also one of those things, I mean, you can see what's going on from your mirrors. So, usually by the time you have to stop, you've already spotted the problem and you're gonna get over and take care of it anyway. But, not quibble, that's how, that's how it's done, so. At least once in a four hour trip, I will stop and do that. Usually, like about an hour in, you know, 50, 60 miles in, stop and do that and then if it, it's less than three hours to where I'm going then I don't, I don't have to do it again. If I see something of course I will stop and check them but otherwise. But you're basically as you drive along you're supposed to check them every three hours roughly. So what I usually do is I check them every time I stop and get out of the truck. Um, just walk around and touch each one make sure it's you know not not busted not feeling loose or floppy or anything so this is the habit you get into some pretty good video anyway I must say the skies like that if they turn nice and red it'd be even better we'll see what it does as the sun goes down if 
This is crazy. There's a guy over on the service road to the left side of the highway here. He's moving faster than I am, and I'm doing right at 70. So he's running 70 on that little bitty service road. I see that a lot in Texas and Louisiana.